Hi, Naturally Curly World. I'm Gerilyn. And I'm Christina. And today we are going to talk about the science behind product buildup. What is buildup? Why do you get it? Where does it come from? How do you get rid of it? All of that. Buildup is when you have a lot of product or a lot of natural oils all layered on top of each other on your scalp. And you don't want that. It's gross, it'll smell, kind of weighs down your hair too. So we're gonna tell you why that's a bad thing and also how to get rid of it. So buildup forms naturally. We produce the oil and sebum from our scalps. That's natural buildup. It's a natural oil that our body produces and it's produced all over our body. So a lot of the time people are like, oh, my hair is so greasy, my scalp's so greasy. It's okay, it's just your natural sebum, especially if you haven't put anything on it. And we also have buildup that's left behind from all of the different products that we use. So conditioners and leave-ins and moisturizers and stylers all coat our hair and they have all these different purposes. Um, they make our hair feel softer. They give our curls definition and hold. They do things for our hair, but they're also formulated in a way that makes them stay on our hair and not come off. When you have product on your scalp or on your hair, that creates a barrier and it means that your hair is kind of suffocating under there because none of the moisture that you're applying, none of the leave-in conditioners or oils, none of that is actually getting through into the hair strand because there's this layer of buildup that's blocking it. A lot of people are like, oh, my scalp's itching. Maybe I'm losing some hair. It doesn't seem like it's shedding. It feels like it's falling out. Probably because it's product buildup that's causing it. So you need to find a way to take all of that product off. But also, and here's a key element, you want to keep the natural sebum that's being produced by your skin. And that's really like that's one of the hardest things to navigate and manage, but once you figure out the right products to use for that, you'll be good to go. So one of the biggest culprits for buildup in the curly world is silicones. Silicones are not bad for your hair on their own, but the thing about silicones is that in order to remove them, you have to use stronger surfactants, which is the ingredient that's used in cleansers that will remove the silicones product buildup, dirt, whatever is on there. And so oftentimes the harsh surfactants are the sulfates that everyone tries to avoid. So if you've heard of curly girls not wanting to use those two ingredients, that is typically referred to as the curly girl method. Not everyone with curly hair hates silicones and sulfates. It's really up to you what products you wanna use and what you feel like works for you. The thing about silicones is they may feel like they're working when you put them on because your hair will feel smoother and it does get rid of the frizz and your hair will look and feel better immediately but in the long term oftentimes when people take these ingredients out of their regimen they find that their hair gets curlier healthier bouncier a lot of these things that we're all looking for but yeah it's it's kind of controversial some people avoid them and some people don't yeah i don't avoid them at all i love i love silicones whoops so <laughs> the reason why is because my hair does need to get it needs to feel way down it needs that definition and that's what cones do for my hair and it looks really really cool however i do that maybe one time, like one time a week, and then I use a refresher. The reason why is because I don't wanna keep adding heavy, heavy silicones on, because I know on wash day, I'll probably have to wash my hair three times in one session just to make sure all of those cones are out, and I don't necessarily wanna do that. So if you are a person that likes using silicone-based products, keep in mind you want to limit how often you use them. And not all silicones are equal, there are water-soluble silicones and non-water-soluble silicones. So we can put a link down below so that you can see a list of the two. Some sulfates are harsher than others. SLS on your packaging, sodium lauryl sulfate or sodium lauryl sulfate, are that's usually the big one to watch out for if you're trying to avoid harsh sulfates, but there are lots of different sulfates. People will often say just look for anything that ends in fate or ends in cone. Um, but there are like naturally occurring right. sulfates or surfactants. So 
just because something sounds natural doesn't always make it good and just because something sounds like a chemical doesn't always mean that it's bad you really should look a little bit deeper so we'll leave you some resources down below if you are a person that happens to have some sort of a skin issue going on you got dermatitis eczema something is happening with you there aren't a lot of products that we can recommend to you only because we're not medical doctors. So we do recommend that you go to a medical professional. We'll leave a link down below to an article that's specifically about like dermatitis and how you should be cleansing and also some signs that you need to go see a trichologist. Yeah, because you don't want to go through this one alone. You don't want to go to any articles, any videos telling you, you have this, so use this product. You actually do need to get a professional in your head, on your scalp, to tell you the best way to take care of what's happening. If you have questions for us about buildup, leave them down in the comments below. And we are gonna come back next week with another video that talks about why your hair smells so bad. So, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.